you to this new planting chart that Kellogg has put together. I just thought it was just such an amazing resource that I think everyone should know about it and I'm really grateful that they put this together. So it was a little bit tricky to find and I will link it uh, below in the show notes and then that way or I'll link it in the description so that you can see what this is like. So let me show you really quickly. There is this free planting chart. So there's these different garden charts. It's set up so that you can pick your zone. So if you're not sure what your zone is, you can see this is the, the big USDA um, plant hardiness, which is different than say the sunset guide, which is a little bit more refined in terms of the zones, but this is a good start. And what you can do is find your individual zone. So these are zones 10 through six, a little bit further down is zone five through one. And when you take a look at this and I'm in zone 10 ish. And so what you can take a look at is there's two different documents. There's a Google sheet and then there's a PDF document. They're slightly different, but in terms of the planting chart, they're exactly the same. And so let me go ahead and then show you what they look like because this is pretty amazing. Now I've already downloaded it. So this will be just a, a quick intro and in how to do it. So what you do is you go ahead and you go to the link and you'll see that it gives you a little bit of information. And when you're looking at a Google sheet, it has down here, you can see different like pages. Technically they're called sheets. And what you can see is this is the instructions. So it tells you if you're not familiar with them, how to work with the sheet. And then you can go ahead and watch a YouTube video too. It looks as if there's something that introduces you to the planting chart, which I haven't seen yet. So go ahead and check that out too. And then you can see that you can go to each of these tabs and it gives you a whole new sheet. Now take a look at this. This is the amazing part. So you can see, it's zone 10 and I'm going to go ahead and then just make a note that this is the view only. So if you want to take a look at it, you can go ahead and do that. If you have a Google account, you can download it to your Google Drive. And so you can go ahead and then go to file make a copy and what it'll do is it'll make a copy to your drive. Now I've already done that. So if you say, okay, it will go ahead and then give you a copy of that so you can work with it. And I already um, have something similar to this. Luckily I renamed it already. So it didn't think I had a duplicate uh, file. And so now it's yours to play with. And what you can do is take a look and I'll walk you through this. So you can see that there is over here the name of the different plants so they're very basic categories so you know you're gonna have a bean but there are so many different beans out there and what you can do is start to refine this event like as you work with it get used to what you are growing in your area and that's what i would like to do is this is a good general guide it says march is when you can start it start the beans and that's a direct sow so that's why they're saying plant rather than sow seeds you want to plant them here and put them directly into the ground and then you can see the beets they're recommending that you can do that as early as september in terms of planting them directly in the ground so you can see what a big growing time frame there is for beets whereas like you go to the bell peppers you can see you can start to sow them and that means putting them into um, a tray putting them in a greenhouse and then plan to transplant them later on and you can then start to think about how can we utilize this type of planting guide and really personalize it or customize it so that it is specific to your area so what i'm going to do is probably make a notion page and make a table that puts all of this information into one guide because you can see how they've combined different rows you won't be able to do that in notion you're going to want to have an individual row for each individual plant that you're going to keep track of so say for beets i started some golden boys and then i also had another variety that i am um, blanking on the name and I want to keep those separate because one of them germinated really well, one of them germinated just really poorly because it's old seed. And I want to keep that separate. And I want to make notes 
that are separate. And you can see those notes area here. I also want to add, you know, days to maturity is something that can be calculated because we can say when we sowed them and then when we started to harvest. And then Notion would be able to keep track of how, how many days to maturity that crop had. And it'd be really, really interesting if we could have the same variety, but then keep track of seed that were sowed at different times of the year to see if, you know, is it really worthwhile to sow two months early when if you just waited a couple of months or a few weeks then you might actually get the same harvest time but in a shorter period because if you if you have a small garden especially for us we plant everything in the front yard if you are trying to get the most out you don't want crops taking longer than they really need to you want to rotate your crops and make sure that you're continually growing things and harvesting things always have something um, coming up that's going to be be eaten two months later when you have something that's going to be eaten right now. And those are the things that sometimes can get a little bit tricky, especially when you have a full-time job, you're doing other things, and your garden is your hobby. You want it to be easy. And I think that planning and keeping track of things in an organized way is maybe a little overkill, but actually plans help you live an easier life, makes it a little bit easier because the information is kept here and you don't have to keep it in your brain. You want this to be your second brain when it comes to your gardening plans. And so I'm gonna help you guys use this to really organize what you're planting. And we're gonna put this together with some of the other information that we have from the Master Gardeners. And I hope that this is gonna make it easier for you to be successful. But we haven't finished up. Let's see what else they have here. I, I always get so excited about having people be successful in their garden that I, I kind of forget that there's more to talk about. <laughs> so here we go. There's some other resources. Now these resources are, um, I believe, all Kellogg uh, links. But I think given that they have put this together, it, it's really wonderful. So there are a few things like, I just wish I had enough broccoli that I never had to buy another um, broccoli in the store. So let's say we took a look at this. Now the pictures are great. I think this is just a really fun way to get excited about growing. The pictures are nice, gives you really easy, simple instructions. So it's a, a good first place to go to. So I think that these links are going to be really helpful for especially new people, but also if you're just getting back to basics, sometimes it's nice to just go and read about a crop that you've been growing for a long time to see what else you can do to really optimize what you're getting out of your garden. And then this is really fun. They have a garden layout. And so if you're looking at this garden layout, you can think of this as maybe your front yard, your backyard. You can also, so you can put things in here. So like, let's say I want to put beets in here. It will put it into one location here. But if you want to multiply them, there's that little corner right here that lights up. If you pull it, it will repeat that individual cell and then move it and copy it throughout the area that you're highlighting. You can also, maybe you want to do a plan for a, maybe a little container. Well, let's say not a container, but a planting box, and you want to do square foot gardening. Now, it might be a little bit tricky to see what you're writing here. You can see it's hard to see what's written in that location. So if you want, you can make these bigger. You can highlight the columns. You can then expand it so it looks a little bit bigger so you can read what's in the cell. You can also do that going up and down from the rows. Oops, let's go ahead and then highlight the rows. There we go. So let's highlight uh, a few rows. Let's make that four feet. And then again, once they're highlighted, if you hold the bottom or the edge of one of the cells, you can then multiply it so that it's size that you want it to be. There we go. So that looks kind of square footish. And then if we take this area here, let's take all of these for right now. If you want to make this into a little uh, planter, you can go ahead and then take the borders and then do the outline. And now you have an outline. Let's see, I think we can make it a little bit thicker here. Oops, that's dotted. Let's make it thick there. It makes it hopefully a little bit thicker. Now, one of the things when you're doing this is 
you can start to just play around and think about like, well, what if I had beets here, I had celery here, I had maybe a tomato here. You can start to think about the height of each of these and then where your sun is coming. So like if you have a tomato that's going to be held upright in a tomato cage, you probably want to have that on the north side and then you want to make sure that that way, if it's on the north side of your little plot, that's not going to shade the other plants. Or maybe you do. Maybe you want to put a tomato maybe here because you want to have some different lettuces that are going to burn in the middle of the summer and so you want them to have a little bit of shade. So maybe you will put some lettuces right next to your tomatoes to like take advantage of some of that natural shade that comes from your tall plant. So there's a lot of different ways you can start to move these around. And then one of the things that is really fun is you can start to think about how you might take this here. You could copy and paste it into another area and then that way you can start to really play around with the seasons. This is really fun. So they did give you an example of how you can put this together. I think this is just really fun. It's a great resource. I'm really impressed with what they did here. And we'll play around with this a little bit more so you can see how you can use it. Let's go back to that planting guide because it's just so beautiful. Here we go. Now this is the Google Sheet version of it. So let's go back and I will show you. There's also a PDF version so it is different in terms of what it has. And so if you take a look at this, actually I can make this so it's a little bit smaller. You can see the whole PDF page. Now you can see here there are some links so the PDF is linkable. If you want to print it, I, I will occasionally print things because I have an eco printer. I actually would recommend if you can get an Epson eco printer. I have not replaced the ink in I think it's been almost two years since I've had it. It just keeps on printing and printing and printing and then I use uh, recycled paper so I use paper that I see that's going to be thrown away and I just use the back of it to print and you can see that it is a little bit different and then now you have some notes here. You have some clickable links here. Maybe if you have it in a PDF editor you might be able to write some notes or you can take the PDF and then put it into either Good Notes if you have an iPad or some other type of PDF note taking app on an iPad and then you can kind of you know put some digital notes on there if you want. You can see there's some other you can see there's these other pages here, here, and then they have a plant tracker so you can fill that out if you want to go analog and put that to use. Then they have a garden calendar and then they have some different like information about their products and so this is a, a good alternative to the Google Sheet if you want to have that. Let's go back just one quick time to the Google Sheet because I wanted to show you one other thing. It's not set up right now that you can have individual rows but I think we can work with what they have here and I will work on trying to give you a template that you can use in Notion which I think will be a little well it will be a lot fun to work with and I do have it's the hard part that I'm thinking about is that I have a Notion page or table that already has a lot of things that I planted from 2020 so it will be a little bit of thinking about how I'm going to combine both this information and then my other planting guide that has a lot of different varieties. Even though I didn't keep it up perfectly at least I kind of know the varieties that I have in terms of the seed that I have available. Now one of the things that I thought would be interesting if you're going to use this page here this by itself can be a great planner. So one of the things I was thinking about was let's say you take the plants here you can start to think about what do you want to have for the summer harvest and so you can click on this little cell here go to this little fill color and then maybe pick a summer type of color and then you can do that for say you want bell peppers you also want to have some corn this year so you're going to go ahead and then do that you can also duplicate these different sheets and you can make a copy so that you can have an individual one so right now it says copy here and you can do 2021 and then that way you have something for each year now when you start to do this you can go ahead and do 2021 and when you make a copy Copy, you can then have all the information that you have from one year and go to the other year. And then we have cucumbers. I know I want to do that for summer. So I started to think about it this way so that I know exactly what I am putting together for each of the seasons. Okra, definitely, I think of summer. And if you're wondering, you know, how do I figure out what goes in each summer or what goes into each season, go ahead and then if you're new to planning out a garden, go to the Master Gardener's Planting Guide and then it will give you all the different months and they also have a season by season guide. 
guide that can give you a, a more overall global look at each individual season, at least for Los Angeles County uh, Master Gardeners. I'm sure that your area also has a Master Gardeners website that you can go to. And then some Master Gardener groups have even apps that you can use to be able to organize what you're going to plant in each season. So you can see that that's a fun way to start to organize and plan. And I hope that this is going to make your life easier. I hope that you get to go out there and grow something. I know I say that every single time, but I really mean it. I'm so excited for you to be able to start growing your own fruits and vegetables. It's just fun for you to eat something that is going to taste so much better than what you can get in the store or at the farmer's market. You are going to be really excited about eating fresh fruits and vegetables. So I hope you go out there and grow something. Have a great day. Bye.